What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of She Heard It With Kittens. I'm Kittens and today I've got my friend Rez on with me. I'm so, so psyched because she doesn't do this kind of stuff. She doesn't do interviews and podcasts and does not talk about personal life stuff. So I'm really grateful she felt safe to share with me today. Uh, we've known each other for quite a long time and we're also both like fellow half Iranian gay Persian DJs. So, you know, we've, we've got the, the vibes right there. Um, but yeah, Rez is an incredible DJ, producer, electronic artist who has a fucking massive cult-like following and a, a beautiful community of fans, honestly. Like, everyone is so nice and so cool. It's just wonderful. Um, but yeah, it's, she's, she's just amazing. And I'm really excited for our conversation today. We get into a bunch of stuff about mental health, some struggles that she's gone through that I had no idea about, and how she's dealt with them all kinds of life lessons and really, really inspiring stuff around that. Obviously, we get into stuff about identity and relationships and, you know, things of that nature as we do in this space. And then we talk a little bit about music and what she's got to come with her career. So before we get into that, though, please make sure you like and subscribe. Follow She, Her, They on Instagram. It's just at She, Her, They. Also, if you go to www.sheherthey.me, there is links to all kinds of great stuff in the community. So there's a Discord. You want to make some friends and connect with some cool people amazing little discord action going on there also there's a playlist that is fantastic if i do say so myself and you can also come find me on instagram at i am kittens so yeah let's jump right into this episode with Rez. hi i'm so glad to have you hello what's up how are you doing I'm very well. I'm just chilling and I just ate an orange and I have another one here that I was going to eat afterwards and I am just currently hanging out in Austin. How about you? Oh, nice. I'm I'm good. I'm just chilling at home in LA, just hanging out. No oranges here. No vitamin C for me. <laughs> That's fine. Um, do you want to go ahead and just introduce yourself for everyone? Your name, pronouns, yeah. how you identify, the whole shebang uh yeah i'm rez my real name is isabel and um i identify as she her and um yeah i'm a music producer dj and that's about all i suppose very nice (laughs) um yeah we met each other so long ago and it's like we share a handful of similar identity factors which we're obviously going to touch on different um, identity stuff relating to like people you love and, um, you know, relationship stuff. So I don't know how you identify these days, but as long as you're comfortable talking about that, we can, you know, touch on yeah. that stuff too. Do you, do you identify with any specific like labels or just? Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I would, I guess identify as definitely gay. I mean, I'm in a relationship. I've been dating only like girls for like a while but I'm in a current relationship with a girl and yeah I don't I don't like think too much about the label like so like intensely you know what I mean like I don't but but yeah I guess I guess I would identify as gay <laughs> okay <laughs> so we can go everyone you know some people are very particular about like their labels yeah. and how they're talked about so you know we gotta just yeah I'm just kind of like I mean, yeah, it's definitely, I'm definitely gay. There's no doubt about that. But I just think, I just think like, I don't like fully just kind of care to be super, super particular about labels and stuff like that for myself personally. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't like dictate your whole, your whole vibe and persona. It just happens yeah. to be part of you. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I know. So your, your dad's Iranian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so is mine. And yeah, I'm like, I always get excited when I, I meet another um, fellow gay Persian. So <laughs> yeah. gay Persian and DJ is like, I'm like, oh, true. It's like fucking unicorn vibes over here. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to talk to you a little bit about that, because I feel like, like, I know my experience was very, like, kind of molded by what I did or did not want to conform to as far as like, who I am, what I'm going to do with my life, you know, how I look, all these things are kind of dictated by a lot of expectations. Um, So how was that for you? Like when you, 
were growing up in general, did you feel like there was some expectations around who you're supposed to be? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I think my, I more on my dad's side, uh, he definitely had more kind of, he, he wanted me to just do very more normal things like, you know, be a doctor, or like go to university and like all this kind of stuff. Like he definitely had expectations of that. Um, in regards to who I would end up with and all of that, like definitely no, I'm very fortunate. I think my family was always very like, like, if anything, when I was like in high school and like dating guys and stuff at that age, like if anything, my dad was like, no, like you can't have any of those, those like gross boys like over like at the house. Like that was like the vibe then. But like, it is funny. Cause like later when I, when like my whole family realized that I was gay, it was like, it was almost like they preferred that for me. They're like, okay, good. Like sh- at least no she'll be with them. like, yeah, exactly. It's like, it was like, it was kind of like a, like, I'm obviously very fortunate in that regard, but um, yeah. yeah, they were like super supportive and just like, it was not even a thing. Like when I, wow. like when it, yeah. Like when it was known that I, I liked girls, it was just kind of like, yeah, true enough. <laughs> like anyways, wow. like, yeah, they didn't really, tight. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, yeah, I think my my, par- my parents were both um really cool in that way. I feel like ever since I was, like, a kid, I was always able to just dress how I want. Like, I, like, shaved my head when I was a kid because I didn't oh, wow. want to brush my, yeah, like, I didn't want to brush my hair. Like, that was my reason. It wasn't, like, wow. there was nothing else. Yeah, it was, like, I don't want to brush my hair, so I, like, shaved my head and, like, I, like, always wore kind of, I don't know, like, baggier clothing and, like, stuff like that and, like, it just did a lot, like, played a lot of sports and, and hung out with like just all the guys all the time and like all this stuff and like like my parents just never questioned or made me wear anything or like be a certain way like which I'm like definitely super grateful for but in regards to the career situation I mean that's kind of a whole other story because like my mom super open with anything like her her perspective is like oh if my daughter wants to live with me forever that'd be amazing so like when I was (laughs) working on music in my parents' basement for, like, a couple years before things started to, like, kind of pop off, like, Mm -hmm. definitely I had a lot of, like, my dad was, like, super, super unhappy with, like, my life decisions of, like, skipping on going to college and just staying home for that, that particular year after high school, Mm -hmm. but, um, but, yeah, I, I was, at that time, I was, like, 18, and, like, I just, it, it didn't bother me at all, for some reason that like people not only my dad but like felt like no one really kind of like believed in my my visions for like my future and stuff like that so and I, I just wasn't really bothered by it thankfully I feel like my my it's funny because I feel like now I would be more bothered by it like I'm 27 really? now yeah like I'm 27 now and it's funny I like look back on my like well, I was so, I was 18. I was like very like naive, you know what I mean? In a lot of ways. And like, I didn't, I wasn't aware of like all of the potential challenges that would come or, or any of the potential, like, you know, like, I don't know. It's almost like I was like oblivious to like what it would actually be like to, to try and become successful in, in like a field of like, like music, for example, like there's like so yeah. many people who make music and like all this stuff, but it's like, I was like so oblivious to it. And I was like, no, 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 I'm like hundred percent going to like become successful at this. And it was like my, my like blindness to the world at the time was like super good. Cause it just like kept me focused and like yeah, able perk. to, it was, it was perfect. It was amazing. It's definitely made me able to like ignore like any hate along the way. Whereas like, you know, sometimes as you age, you kind of you kind of like learn more about the world and they almost become a little bit more afraid of the world because there's like because like you real like the reality sets in like the world is definitely a scary place and like there's a lot of things that can go wrong and all this stuff so it's like yeah but during that time I was just very like no everything's fine actually and um everything's perfect all the time and I'm just going to continue to like live this way of just like being like I'm just gonna become successful and like there was no other question to be asked it was like pretty yeah shit I mean that's that's so beautiful it's like you got to hold on to this childlike freedom and like yeah not not what's the word yeah naivety I was gonna say ignorance but like it it, it's like a blissful ignorance to how fucked up shit can be and how hard things are exactly yeah like you said a blissful ignorance I honestly yeah like that's that's definitely how I feel like I actually went about probably the majority of my life, honestly, up until like more up until more recently, actually, I feel like so what changed? 
Um, I'm trying to think about what, well, this, this year actually specifically has been like extremely shockingly insane for me, like in a, in like a mental health kind of way, like that Mm -hmm. I've never experienced before. And I definitely wanted to like, kind of touch on that a little bit because I'm so private like I don't like tell anyone like anything yeah I feel like, like you don't yeah you don't ever do shit like this either which I'm no, like never. so like grateful that you were like yeah I'm down <laughs> yeah no because this is exactly the kind of interview that I would oops, that I would love to do is just like to like simply just like talk and have like kind of like a video kind of interview I've, I, that's kind of stuff I'm down for but mm-hmm. yeah I mean that this year has been really odd like you know how everyone said like post-pandemic it was really common that a lot of people had like a lot of anxiety, like a lot of like depression during the pandemic, but especially afterwards, a lot of people did too, because it was like, so many people were so used to like being in the comfort of their own homes all the time. And like in that stillness all the time, and then getting like thrown back into like reality and like the chaos. Right. Mm -hmm. And in my case with like, obviously the career that I have is like very, very high intensity, high pressure, like all this stuff. Basically, like what happened for me was like everything was all well in like 2021, like everything super. I was like, I I enjoyed actually having the time off in the pandemic because right Mm -hmm. before the pandemic in 2019, I really, really burned myself out. Like, and like you tour like you tour like fucking crazy. These days, it's these days, it's more chill, but at that time, it was like really, really insane. And like for years and years, I did it for like six years. I basically no, like, yeah, like maybe like five, six years, like straight heavy touring, like nonstop. And like, somehow for for so long I was like cool with it but like was I really though like I feel like I was like struggling along the way and it was like it was like it, it, it was interesting like I felt like basically even throughout the first few years of my touring I felt it was kind of difficult in a lot of ways like I like just loved to be home I was like such a homebody and like I love to play the shows and stuff but like the travel aspect and like the exhaustion and especially the time the time changes and like all of that stuff if you're doing like international stuff so basically long story short 2019 super burnt out then the pandemic happened so I was actually enjoying the time to like chill and like work on Mm -hmm. music and like kind of like relax right and then 2021 happened and then things started to open up again but it was still super chill I only had like one two shows like a month maybe or like maybe one month there was like three shows one month there was like five but like for the most part it was super chill then what happened was we had this big tour planned like my spiral tour it was uh, for my album Mm -hmm. and this is when things like became very interesting like Mm -hmm. it was it's it's almost like it's crazy to try and explain this in like a nutshell because it was like so so insane and just like whatever but I'm gonna just try my best to explain but okay so basically we had planned this tour like for 2021 uh for for 2021 but we had to obviously cancel it because of the pandemic was still kind of like you know a thing yeah so we had to postpone it for 2022 And so basically this already felt a little bit dated for me, first of all, because I was like, this is already old music for me. I already made this like two years ago. It's like, it felt, it felt right away. It felt kind of dated for me. Second of all, it was the most expensive tour I have ever had. It was the most, it was the most I've ever put into it in regards to like paying for production. Like it, it just an obscene amount of money to like pay for this tour and all this stuff. What ended up, ended up feeling like was, it almost felt like I was going to either like end up losing a bunch of money on the tour or like all this stuff. And like everything was just felt very stressful. And obviously on top of that, it was the most amount of shows that I had ever done for a tour, for a, for a headline tour, not to mention. Yeah. And not to mention, I was still in pandemic mode. Like I was still right. in like chill, like I was still in chill mode. Like, like I didn't big, want big adjustment. Yeah. yeah. And so it's so crazy to talk about this because like, it like from the outside point of view, like I remember during this tour, I was getting so many tweets like Rez is at her prime, like this is the best show, like she is at her prime. And like no one even knows what I was going through like during that time. It was like really intense. Basically, what really happened was this is where like the plot twist happens that I didn't mention yet. This is when thing things got like scary for me. So basically. Mm-hmm. It was like January and 
No, it was like January and my tour was about to start in February. The tour was going to start on like February 17th, I believe. And all of a sudden, and fe- I'm like chilling. I'm like in, like, I'm in love. I'm happy as shit. Like I'm literally like everything else, everything in my life is like going perfectly. Right. And then all of a sudden, because of the, I think, I still don't know if this is for sure the reason it happened. It's such a question mark. But my guess is that because of my stress about the tour and my kind of like reluctance towards the tour and how much I was like dreading like being so in the public again and like doing all this stuff here's what happened all of a sudden I got slapped with a crazy case of insomnia and so so here it sounds so like oh okay that's what it is let me explain no that's intense if anyone's gone through insomnia they know like that is it's debilitating and you start like you can straight up start hallucinating after two days of insomnia like it's fucked up yeah so the thing was for me too so there's like so many things to touch on here but basically like when I did a in my in 2019 when I said I burnt myself out there was one moment where I was in China and what happened was I, um, I I went multiple days basically without sleeping. And that was just because of like heavy touring schedule. And then I remember there was this moment where I was like, I really need to sleep. Like this is my time period to sleep before the next travel, which I had about like, I don't know how many hours I had, but I had a certain amount of hours of sleep. And this is where it like kind of like the seed was planted during this time. I was having such a hard time falling asleep. And I remember starting to feel insane about it because I was like, I have to sleep now because I haven't really slept in days and I have to do it now. And this is my time. And because I was trying to force myself to sleep, I couldn't. Right. Right. And so so I ended up having like this crazy thing happen in China. This was years ago, but it was like I had like a really insane, like like sleep deprivation related kind of psychosis like situation. Yeah. And like I didn't even tell anyone about that either, which is really funny. But like it was really intense. I ended up finishing the rest of the uh, uh, rest of the travel in China and all was well. And that was it. I didn't think about it again, but then for February, this February, all Wait, of a sudden, rewind, hold on. What, what do you mean? You're like, what was the psychosis moment? And you just glazed over that. <laughs> like it was no big deal. Like, well, I mean, like you mentioned about like, when you start to like hallucinating stuff when yeah. you like don't sleep, like when you don't sleep for like multiple just days, like, it was like, kind of vibe. and the other thing too was like at the time what I was trying to what I was taking was uh little bits of melatonin I was trying to force myself on the China sleeping schedule so I would take melatonin at what felt like 2 p.m Toronto time but Mm -hmm. it was actually 2 a.m in China so I would like so I would like try and take you know melatonin and stuff but here's the thing if you take and I don't know if anyone else like has had this experience but I have and it is if you take melatonin during a time that you're not actually going to fall asleep like you can really like enter some pretty it's like you're half awake half asleep so you're like dreaming and like awake and like it's a lot of like sleep paralysis yeah a a weird lucid space and so that ended up making me just freak out like I was just Mm -hmm. like what is happening and it was just like I was basically just like hallucinating a bunch and like 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 it's like I was like sort of hearing things and stuff like that but it was because I was half awake half asleep like you know what I mean it was like I was like in a daze and um and then I still couldn't fall asleep because when I passed the when I crossed the threshold of like x amount of hours not sleeping it became even more difficult to then fall asleep it was really weird Uh, yeah because because you get you get put in this like wired state right so yeah So that was that. And that was really at the time traumatic for me. Like I remember thinking like it was like really intense. And I was like, I really need to take a break from touring. And then like the pandemic happened. So it was like, then I had this huge break. Yeah. And so I was able to like totally forget that even happened and like move on and like not even think about it. And like everything was fine. Like everything was my sleeping was fine. Everything was normal. Like it was all good. But then, as I mentioned, that was like the original seed that got planted about like fear of like relation to sleep. So, so, so basically what ended up happening though was um, February 1st or something hit February 2nd or something. Just keep in mind, I'm very happy at this time. So once again, in love with my girlfriend, we are like so happy. Everything's amazing. All of a sudden my tour is coming up and all of a sudden I was unable to sleep. Like all of a sudden I had a couple days. It was like one day I stayed up to like 7am, ended up falling asleep and woke up like two hours later. And then the next day it was like 
kind of the same thing. And then the next day it was the same thing three days in a row. Um, and so I, I, I went into immediate panic mode about it. Right. Cause I was like, yeah. I have a tour that I have to do. Like, and I'm already like highest stress about this tour. I'm already like freaking out about this. Right. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to get, I'm going to get like so personal <laughs> with you about this situation, yeah. which, yeah. which like, it's crazy that I'm even like sharing it, but like, I just kind of want to explain it. Cause it, without question, I would be lying if I just said like, this year has been fucking awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm going to explain because this has been a big, a major part of it. And basically um, what ended up happening was I was like talking to my manager and like talking to like doctors and like all this shit. I'm like, what the fuck is happening to me? Like, why can't I sleep? Like, this is crazy. I'm about to start my tour in like a week. Like, and I most certainly can't handle like, you know, being extremely severely sleep deprived while like having a major tour. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, um, what ended up happening was I out of and here's the thing I this all happened because of panic this all happened because of anxiety like if I if I had just been aware that like this this was gonna pass and that like I didn't need to take any medication for it or anything then I I would have if I had just stayed calm during the whole process None of this would have happened, but but that's because, so hard to do. It's so hard yeah. to stay like chill when you feel like you don't have control over your body yeah. and resting. Especially it's so important. That looks like especially, pickle juice. <laughs> it's it's, it's lemon. It's lemon okay. water. I was like, are those fucking pickles floating? <laughs> but, no, no worries. But basically, like uh, right away, without even being patient to wait it out, because of my anxiety, which I have had throughout my whole kind of 20s like I never had anxiety before that though remember I told you I was like 18 and like oblivious to the world so like I had zero anxiety like my whole life up until my 20s and then um and then I got slapped so hard with it now and now I'm just like yeah so then it became a huge thing in this moment so basically long story short I ended up getting prescribed this thing called Ambien and Ambien yeah yeah so it it gets pretty crazy so so basically what ended up happening was I was like having once again struggles I didn't want to resort to taking it or anything like that because I was like no I'm just gonna wait but then it got so bad like the the insomnia got so bad that I was like I literally need to take something for this because once again I I'm not canceling this tour I was by the way I almost canceled this tour I'm not joking, probably like 50 times. Like I literally had conversations with my manager going back. Like it it was like, he was like petrified for me. Like everyone was petrified for me during this time. Like it was really intense. So I started to take Ambien at night and it was definitely working. So it would work and knock me out, whatever, whatever. And then and here's the thing that they didn't, that they didn't tell me about the medication that like someone really should have told me is that there's a couple of things. A, if you take it more than like two weeks and you take it continually, it like can definitely like cause like depression and also like kind of like depressive feelings and like stuff like that. And the other thing was that when you stop taking it, if you stop taking it suddenly, then there's rebound insomnia. Oh, so, God. so no one told me about this and it's so crazy. And I think everyone was just in such a panic because it was like, if I was going to cancel this tour, it was going to like, you know, be a massive deal on so many levels. And like, I also didn't want to cancel it because even though at that moment, my, my like mental sanity and like health was like definitely teetering, I still had this value that like I made this commitment to do this tour and so it was like because that's one of my values as well I I I did it and and I'm glad that I did it by the way in retrospect but there was I can't even tell you some crazy shit that happened during that tour like all in relation to I didn't realize that like taking the Ambien there was going to become like a dependency on it and like, yeah. by the way, of course, a difference between addiction and like dependency. I've never actually yeah. been addicted. To, I've never been addicted to anything before, but I became dependent on this medication. And like, it's really intense. And there's so many crazy side effects with it. Like people start straight up sleepwalking, doing all kinds of wild shit on Ambien. Yeah, for sure. I actually didn't experience any of that. But um, for me, for a while, I didn't notice any, any really side effects. But what I did notice was that the random days that I didn't take it because I didn't think that I needed to, I didn't sleep at all, not a single second. 
Yeah, so there was times where I ended up playing shows where I didn't sleep for two days, like 55 oh. hours. Yeah, like I was at Okeechobee, like I literally headlined Okeechobee and I didn't sleep for 55 hours, like nothing. Oh and I, yeah, and it, and it was like so, it's so, it was so crazy. Like I can't even explain to you. It was like, you know what though? I actually had fun at that show. I think it was like, I reached the certain part, like I, I reached the certain moment of like, um, sleep deprivation that I was like almost having like a weird god complex like it was kind of like it was like oh my god like I can stay awake for this long and like (laughs) and like do these things and like play these shows and like be fine and I was like kind of like having a moment of like yeah of like whoa like and I was like doing a bunch of crazy shit like taking like like cold cold like really cold showers like I was like super influenced by um that like Iceman Hoff dude but Mm. he was like because he liked he like he's like all about like dunking himself in like ice water and like all that stuff there's like a lot of benefits to it so like while being sleep deprived and like jumping in like cold water it was like making my did my brain do like insane things your body was like tripping the fuck out oh it was tripping the fuck out yeah and then I would and then I would end up taking like Ambien again and then I would pass out for another like eight hours and wake up being totally fine but the thing was was then um I also noticed that another thing was when I didn't take it, I felt like a lot of night, I had like crazy nightmares and shit, Mm -hmm. but, um, but this was, this was still not when it was really bad. Like the worst part. This is not really bad? No, no, it got worse. Yeah. So what, what ended up happening was I did like all my shows, like I got through, I got through all of them and like, and all this stuff, but then I had this like break and I had like this month break before my tour would continue. So I said to myself and like, and like everyone in my life, I was like, Oh, I'm just going to like stop taking this for sleep now. And so I ended up stopping taking it abruptly. Well, actually what happened was it stopped working. So it stopped working. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I, I went like three days basically without like sleeping and then like and I was like this isn't working anymore and so everyone was like like doctors and stuff like as they do are like take a higher dose and I'm just like hell no that's I forgot to answer yeah and I forgot to mention too that like at this point I had already started to feel like depressed kind of and I've never experienced depression in my entire life by the way like so this my my I'm really grateful for this experience I just want to add because my mind now is so so open and like like I've I just understand and like I understand I think a lot more about like what people go through and like mental stuff and like how it can be like getting out of that negative spot that I was in was three like three times more difficult than becoming successful like that's the way I view it like like becoming successful like and that's with like all of the resources like you you had you know doctors and access to all yeah. kinds of support systems so like yeah you, getting that's, that's so important to know yeah still and like hard with all that I was definitely feeling like super defeated at that point because like this this like medication that I was prescribed like stopped working and like and um then I just I was like I'm just gonna stop taking it so I stopped taking it and then I had a crazy rebound insomnia so I ended up I ended up going about six days without sleeping Oh my god. And and then I went to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. So it was like it was like really intense. Yeah, like my girlfriend and I, we like went to the hospital. It was like super intense. Um I was like just like a zombie and like I was still like kind of like like her and I were still kind of like trying to make light as much as we could of the situation and like still like, you know, try and watch the shows that we watch and like all this stuff. Yeah. But like I was not well. Like my my head my anxiety was like I can't even explain to you like it is like stopping a medication suddenly also is probably not so wasn't the best you. move. Yeah. yeah, like I'm sure plenty plenty of people could have suggested to take, you know, smaller doses, but I just became so over it because I was like this is making me sad. Like I've never yeah. felt like this before. Like this is definitely making me feel like a la- a lack of hope and a lack of excitement towards life. And I'm always yeah. I've always been very 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 optimistic and excited and like stoked on life and I was like this is weird something is like bringing me down and I was like it has to be this medication so anyways Mm -hmm. I I I dropped I stopped taking it and that's when I experienced the severe backlash of the uh, insomnia of like the the post like post ambient insomnia and then um so that was like easily the worst week of my life like no like no questions asked yeah so how did you recover from that 
So then what I ended up doing was, by the way, I was definitely talking to like therapists and stuff like throughout like the situation, which was definitely helpful. Um, I do think like talking to someone is one piece of the puzzle. I don't think it's like the problem solver. I just think it is a piece like when you're going through anything like everyone's going through some shit like everyone some people are going through grief some people are going through severe depression and severe anxiety some people are going through all t- sorts of things medical problems whatever whatever yeah. for, for me it just so happened to be this yeah. insomnia thing like this yeah. it, it, it that just so happened to be like the thing for me and like and basically uh what I did was I just stopped taking it and uh during that week we just kind of tried like me and my girlfriend we just kind of tried to like do things as normal as possible I was working out I was going for walks I was forcing myself to like walk up and down this like one hill um near near my spot here and so I would like walk up and down the hill a lot and because my mind at that time during that week it was racing thoughts like the loudest the loudest thoughts ever it was like almost as if it the way to describe it is if like you're super stoned like you just ate like an edible or something and like you're too high off of like the weed and like your brain feels like it's like yeah. really loud yeah. like that's how like kind of severe my anxiety felt wow. during that moment so so and so in order to kind of help that what I was doing was I was walking up and down this hill a lot I was starting to bike again and I was like watching kind of inspirational videos on YouTube that I have always found inspiring and insightful like a lot of like um, psychological and like philosophical videos and a lot Mm -hmm. of like self mastery and like you know becoming the best version of yourself type videos which was me links I love that yeah I love that shit too. I think it's actually extremely important to like stay on top of that. Um, at least for me, it, at least for me, it was, it has always been. So it was all these little kind of steps I was taking. Um, I would also still take a little bit of like melatonin, like whatever. And like, um, like kind of natural supplements, like more not like a more natural stuff. There's like, just to try uh, and regulate. Your system. Yeah, ch- yeah. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, just to kind of regulate it. And like, it was crazy. It was like every day that I had, that I ended up like it, the sleep ended up getting better and better. Like it was like one day I got two hours, one day I got four hours, one day I got one, one day I got seven, one, like it was kind yeah. of like, you know, it, it was kind of like a little, like it was unpredictable. And what I was mm-hmm. trying to do was in that moment was just try my best to learn to be comfortable with discomfort and that and 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 basically like not to be too hard on yourself because you know one day one day like if I only slept like two hours it was so important for me to not just have like a meltdown about it and be like fuck like what the fuck because like healing anything is not linear and that's one of the the main things that I like learned and I still continue to learn in my life like throughout the process of like any healing whether, you know, someone went through a breakup or like I said, someone's going through like heavy grieving or whatever, like that kind of healing, it, you, it's not just like up, like, it's you know, ways, like it's like, yeah. there's like, or like drug addiction, you know, like yeah, the, and some days this are is easier, a, some days are harder. Yeah, definitely. And like, that was something that I have been really kind of focusing on understanding and that like, that like some days are going to be absolutely terrible and like for and like for whatever reason I might not be able to sleep for a different reason like say like Mm -hmm. like it it, some nights some nights not everyone gets like a perfect sleep like some one one day like if I have to wake up at like 4 a.m to go to the airport or something I'm probably not going to sleep at all and like in that moment it's like you kind of just got to like learn to like roll with like the punches you know and like just know that like not every day is going to be like like perfect not every day Mm -hmm. is going to like be like you're not going to feel great every day especially if you're like healing from something yeah. and I think it's like that was like one thing because I was like so I, I was so hard on myself during the process because I was like like during that whole process this was like a few months ago by the way mm-hmm. it was like I was so hard on myself because I was like why is this happening to me like you know like kind of questioning like the way that my mind was working was like it was like me versus myself it was like I was like angry at myself because mm-hmm. like why is my body not operating in the way that I want it to operate I mean, it's, like it's all like, this stuff it's- it's such a control thing too because it's for like sure when you are not able to control the situation and then there all this anxiety comes from it and the expectations of it it's like the only way to really heal and move on and like let things go is to just surrender to the waves of it and like no yeah it's it's gonna be up and down and like I just got to let it do what it needs to do obviously you can like do all the little supportive things take supplements and like to be healthy but yeah, you can't you can't control 
everything sometimes and for that sure is fucking hard to deal with like yeah and the other thing too that was like really really like I I truly believe I'm like a changed person after this like I feel like because for me that was my um vulnerability spot like my vulnerability spot was like a sl- like was sleep so I felt like there was moments in that during that the de- like that deep kind of hell that I was experiencing there was moments that I was like literally like it felt like the worst possible scenario. Like it literally felt like I would have chosen anything other than that. Like, like literally like take off, like it was like literally take off my fucking arm rather than this. Like, I'm not even joking. Like I, like I felt for me, it felt so redundant and so repetitive that it was like, actually, it felt like the end of my world. Like that's what it felt like. And And so the fact- And your nervous system is all fucked up on top of that. Like that's- Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so my point behind saying that is like, this was my personal hell, like everyone would have their own personal hell. Like if you imagine like what your one of your greatest fears is all this stuff, one of my greatest fears is losing my mind, you know, and like, when you're so sleep deprived, and like, so anxious, it feels like you're losing your mind, right? So it was it was definitely my thing. And the, the fact that I've been able to, like, heal and continue to heal through like, through like, this situation because of course not every day is perfect right like 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 some some nights I'm like fucking everything's perfect then other nights sometimes I'm just like not able to sleep right away and like in those moments I I'm still learning to like be kind of like chill you know even though it happens so much less now and like happened like so it's like it's not nearly nearly as as frequent as it used to be it's still like you know in those moments it's still a, a, a practice for me to like remain like neutral and understand that like it's some t- some days just aren't going to be well and that also um the other thing is like no matter what I think people are healing from and like going through it sometimes feels like all of the little baby steps you're taking are not doing anything like yeah. for example like when I would like go and like walk up and down this hill like 30 times and I would like go for a bike ride and I would like take a cold shower and I would eat super healthy and I would watch all these inspirational videos. Sometimes it almost felt like nothing was enough. And that was mm-hmm. like, nothing was changing anything. But then as you continue to like, like, you know, enforce those habits for weeks and months and whatever, you look back and you're like, oh, shit, like th- it yeah. all did. It all did add up like the little therapy session that you had the little walk that you had the hangout that you had with your friend where you talked about it, or, you know, like you ate healthier for like a while and like all this stuff, all of yeah. it does end up end up contributing to making things better. And that's, that's one of the, the key things that I learned too, because I feel like next time and you know life will continue to throw random obstacles in like all of our ways but like I think now I am, I'm very aware that like no matter literally no matter what any anything throws up like whatever life throws at me now I'm like let, this will be easy compared to like what the fuck yeah. I just went through and like literally since then more than ever I appreciate the littlest things like I appreciate like waking up and like making food and like being able to eat it because of my appetites there. And like, cause like, right. cause I barely had an appetite cause I was like, I was so anxious. Right. So yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah. So like even just being present and like going for a walk and like looking at the tree and just like being present in the moment that I am standing here looking at this tree and my mm-hmm. brain is at peace. Like every moment just feels like so incredible now because it's just like, I, I just I'm appreciating the very simple like mundane things of like even just having a sane mind you know what yeah. I mean I mean I yeah. feel like sleep is one of the most base I mean it's, it's the, one of the most basic human needs so to have that taken away from you <laughs> yeah is is enough to make you really be like fuck like I'm grateful yeah. I'm grateful yeah and for I sure see what's up and and it's it's so it's so interesting that like with the anxiety part of it, the more you focused on like, I need to sleep, I need to sleep, Mm -hmm. I need to sleep, the the less your body was letting you sleep because you're putting all that energy towards it. And it just like kind of builds up. And I think that totally applies to so many aspects of life because hugely we don't, a lot of times we, you know, we want that control. We don't want to surrender to the process or to whatever, or like trust in ourselves or trust like the way things are supposed to flow. And it just kind of, makes a situation worse when it doesn't need to be definitely you know? yeah it's like so, yeah because we we cling lesson. to it Def- yeah. I couldn't agree more yeah it's it's wild 
wow, that's fucking nuts. I had yeah. no idea. I know. I and it, I didn't tell I, because I didn't tell anyone. Like I, I've yeah. I've been really generally pretty private. I mean, even me talking about my girlfriend on here. Like I mean, yeah. I, I I've been so private. Like only only all my close friends do I like post about it and like I'm and I just like I just really prefer to kind of you guys of... are so cute too it's like disgusting <laughs> I love thank it thank you I love her she's literally like the best the best ever it's the most healthy most calm like chill nurturing like we're just on the exact same vibe like literally like no no arguing no nothing we're just like just we're Healthy just like chill. chilling yeah we're just yeah. chilling like that's it and like yeah we we live together and like I don't know I still visit um I still visit like Canada as well here and there I go back and forth a little bit but um mm-hmm. you guys are based but yeah in like Austin though mostly yeah mm-hmm. that's nice what do you think but was, yeah cause, you know like we we've, we've both in our time of knowing each other gone through some toxic <laughs> shit with people we were dating um and you know there's no better learning experience than when you're suffering unfortunately uh, yeah, absolutely yeah there's so, no doubt du- there's no doubt about that yeah what do you think was like because like I know like I had a, a major history pattern of like dating people that made me feel the same things over and over and over and I once I was like I can't fucking do this anymore what am I doing that's making me think subconsciously I deserve this because I need to break the pattern and so I like figured it out and whatever and then everything changed and I'm like happy and have a like healthy beautiful relationship so I realized my thing was like self-worth like deep down I didn't feel like I deserved stability I didn't think I deserved happiness and peace because I was so used to chaos and that was familiar so I craved it so did you have a moment where like a light bulb moment where you're like what the fuck (laughs) I did <laughs> something different and how did you like how did you kind of like pivot your I don't know your magnet for people to to draw you to something um, that was so healthy and peaceful and like good for you well yeah I mean one thing for sure that I that I will mention is that I I don't really have too much of like um I mean, let me just try to like think of how to word this like I definitely have not always been the most perfect angel myself. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like, it's not so much about, you know, like, oh, I deserve better or like anything like that. Right. Like I, I I have had multiple situations of, you know, me making my mistakes, someone else most certainly making their mistakes, this and that, whatever, whatever. Like I, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not just about what like someone else did and like right. anything like that I just I think over yeah, time we all play our ro- play a role yeah like you know some some situations I think I learned a lot from because I realized that I didn't want to be that kind of person like of course like nothing fucking over the top but just like just general basic like you're in your early 20s like fucking yeah whatever, nobody's, you know? nobody's like, really like <laughs> yeah like uh, of, I mean of, who, who's who's perfect that like fucking yeah. 21 yeah. so my, my point my point is is that sorry this is so funny my point my point is is that like I learned a lot through um observing my own self and things that I didn't really like about things maybe that I have done or said in the past and then on the contrary I was also experienced the 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 opposing situation where I was most certainly being mistreated in like a multitude of ways and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. eventually eventually after you know years of trial and error as everyone dates a couple people here and there whatever you kind of just kind of for me I just kind of got a a really clear understanding of what I would want and what I definitely wouldn't want and like how I want to be and like the way that mm-hmm. I want to be like the best version of myself and like I I just kind of I don't know how to explain it and then I ended up like you know meeting my girlfriend like a while ago and um it just all everything was just like straight away we're just like on the same page and it was like super chill and like we have this like general we've all we've each had our own little experiences and like neither of us want anything that's um rocky and unstable and neither of us want anything that is like you know shouting and like yelling that's not like not even my nature you know what I mean like all that stuff like just um like you know just talking to each other meanly like in <laughs> meanly is that fucking yeah. me- it's meanly a word now. yeah it's a but, word now yeah like I don't know just like neither of us it, it's pretty simple it's like do you want to have a 
calm, chill, nurturing, loving, happy relationship, or do you not? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like both of you, yeah. both it's of you totally guys just kind choice. of. It is a choice. Yeah. And both of you, uh, it's important that both people are kind of on the same page and like both people have experienced, of course, like good things, bad things, whatever. And you kind of like take all of this information and collect it all together and, and, and know like what you will, like what you want and what you will not ha- take, like what, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And mm-hmm. like for you, like you said, it was a lot of like, re- like, um, lack of like kind of like self-love and like stuff like that and yeah and that's like also a huge part of like evolving and growing and like learning through these like bad situations that we all have experienced in one way or another like you just end up learning like oh I I did not deserve this or whatever whatever and and then you learn like what you do deserve and what you what you want and and everything like that and then it kind of becomes easier to dodge those situations you know Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I couldn't fathom being in a situation like that like now like literally if like anyone even like raised their voice at me like I'd be like bye (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'd be like no thank you it's just like not part of my like it's not what I want so it's like yeah it just doesn't align yeah definitely it just it, it, and it becomes once again it becomes more easy as you experience things some people some people don't even have to go through that chaos some people just like naturally yeah. find their their partner you know what like though they, yeah. but, but they don't honestly like there I know so many people like I have over the years where like I'm like why can't I be like you <laughs> you have this like great whatever and they still they still have their struggles they just are able to like or they they happen to go through them with somebody that they are connected to for longer periods of time so on the outside it maybe seems super healthy great and easy but they're going through their growth reflection shit with another person oh, yeah so. yeah without question that's that's actually one of the other things I, I definitely realized this year is like literally everyone is going through their own shit like literally yeah. everyone like like some people are just more vocal about it I think I'm pretty vocal like not in public I'm not vocal about it but I'm very vocal about it if you know me like if yeah. like you know if I like talk to people like I'm no I don't hide anything like like, you know what I mean? But like, everyone is going through shit. Yeah, I think it's like it, it, there's types of people who are like, I'm super analytical. So anytime anything with myself or with somebody else is away, I'm like, why? Let me fucking open the hood, yeah. and figure out like why and yeah. tinker around and see what's going on. So I mean, it's, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Like, and I think it helps too, because this is one thing I really learned especially throughout like the pandemic in the last couple of years. Like, I feel like people, especially in different parts of life or especially in like a profession that maybe is creative or you're a bit more isolated or whatever, it's harder to maintain like a kind of friendship community or, or certain relationships. Like you maybe have your like few close people and like, you know, those are your relationships that you have the energy for. I think sometimes, especially in the last few years, people will take it really personally. Like so-and-so isn't responding to me and they're not giving me the attention. They're not making time for me. And, you know, they don't want to be my friend anymore or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm like, everyone is going through so much shit. And that is the ultimate, like, compassion for other people's shit is the ultimate medicine for any any issues like that. Yeah, absolutely. you're taking it personally, someone's not responding to you, or they're not making time to see you or whatever. And you go like, Oh, it must be me. I'm not I'm not good enough. They don't want to be my friend. I'm not cool enough. I'm not this or that. And it's like, no, they're fucking like, they're spiraling in their own mess of shit right now. <laughs> yeah. And they have no energy to put towards anything other than that. Like, yeah, that's very true. It's so it's- crazy. It's interesting that you say that because it's actually so true. I've noticed that uh, a little bit more this year as well in regards to people becoming a little bit upset or taking things personally if mm-hmm. I was distant or like anything like that, you know? And and yeah, I, I, I definitely, you're just totally right. Like everyone, <laughs> this, this year has been pretty crazy. I've actually seen, I've seen a lot of people kind of experience their own fair share of like things this year and like their own kind of way. And and yeah, I don't know. It's definitely important not to take things personal. There's no doubt about that. Like, I feel like uh, I've, I personally never ever feel bothered if someone, of course, I would feel this way if my girlfriend or something like didn't respond and be like, oh, mm-hmm. like, where, where she, like, how come? Like, but, Tell like, me why you're not responding and then, <laughs> and then I'll give you space. Don't ghost. <laughs> yeah, no, no, of course. But I mean, like, I feel like generally with like 
friendships and stuff in, in my life is I've, I've always really enjoyed kind of like low maintenance kind of uh stuff like friendships mm-hmm. and stuff like that so sometimes if if I don't respond or something and, and it takes me like a while like I I love it when people are like kind of like super easy going about it because I, I I try to give that same energy back like if, if I ever message yeah. someone and they don't respond to me I would never never get upset about it it's like yeah it's just like I just understand like oh they're probably busy and like that's that like <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll be either, I'll be busy, busy or they forgot and like that's yeah human. and I think it's also super important to always like I don't know how to I'm trying to trying to explain how to say this but like I think it's also important not to give too much that you're not receiving so like if you're messaging somebody mm-hmm. like a bunch of times or something they're not responding like also be aware like you know maybe this is your cue to like not message them so much Read like maybe room. it's just yeah, read the room and kind of like this is like this is the cue to like just focus on your own thing and like not 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 cling too much about the fact that you know this person isn't talking to you as much yeah. as they used to or like anything. It's just like yeah, it's just kind of just flow with like the nature of things. Like you know, if if you should never want to give someone um, way more than you're receiving. I think you know, like not like all like not all the time. You know, like if it, if it's, it's kind of the like pe- a sleep thing too, because it's like if. If you're trying too hard, you're trying to force yourself to sleep, you're not going to fucking sleep. So you're trying to force a friendship or a relationship of any sort and it's not budging, like you're going to make it worse. Exactly. Let it Exactly. Let it like surrender back off. Yeah, exactly. And I know that's not necessarily like the easiest thing to do all the time, obviously, but it's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's like, but yeah, it's just, that's true though. I've definitely, I've definitely seen a little bit of that kind of stuff this year too. So that's funny. Yeah, which makes it. sense. Like you're the, fucking suffering with your mental health and rest. Like how <laughs> could, how could anyone who <laughs> yeah. is even like understanding expect you to be this like mega present friend while juggling career, while juggling this and not sleeping. It's like, yeah, you know, it was once crazy. you understand that, it's, it's a lot easier to be like, oh, this isn't about me. She just hasn't fucking slept in a month. Like, <laughs> God. Yeah, My exactly. Fucking God. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I really do see the like genuinely. I see like the beauty in the whole experience now, and that's I, I just see like, I like I said earlier, I'm just like able to appreciate like all of the little little things and like other mishaps that happen in life. Like I'm like that's basically just like I'm just like all right, like. T- all good but yeah Thanks, shit. yeah wow yeah God. uh well i'm gonna pivot real quick because i have some sure. other questions for you yeah definitely th- that's fucking <laughs> that's a fucking trip i'm like i still can't believe you went through that and like very quietly that's very, very quietly wild. yeah i didn't tell it. and then it was wild i mean you have i guess that is a good pivot you have such a wildly supportive like loving f- fanship like what I don't even know what to call them they're like your your fans and followers and cult of res like whatever the, I forget what they're called these days. <laughs> yeah but like they're so they're so loving and so positive from anything I see it's just like they fucking love you and it seems like they're very aligned with your energy and what you put out there which is so beautiful so it's like even if you wanted to share like yo I'm fucking having a hard time right now and even sharing this I'm sure so many people are going to be like feeling very seen and and like compassionate and understanding and even if you had to cancel a show because you haven't slept they'll be like I get it I want rest to sleep I want I want rest to rest I know so I actually nice to have that I actually want to mention too that like I think some people would be like, oh, you should have just canceled it and take care of your health. And I I could not agree more in regards to like, yes, definitely. Like, I'm not proud that I, I don't know, it's hard. It's conflicting. I'm proud of myself because I pushed through and and finished what I, you know, um, signed up for. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, it was really dangerous to like push those boundaries. I, I don't know whether I would like suggest that anyone pushes on their mental, uh, the way that I did. I, it's, it's really conflicting. But at the time, like would I said, I had, again? would, you do would it I again? do, would I do what again? Like, like would, if knowing like what you went through and if you could go oh, back, n- okay. Okay. Would you have canceled? It, no, I wouldn't have. And that's because um, I don't regret anything in my life. Nothing. 
I don't regret anything. So, but if it happened again, if this came up again, so here's the thing: it's not going to because uh, I the one of the things that I want to mention is that my whole touring schedule is different now. I will Mm my 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 whole team and everything about my project now is extremely strict. Ever since that experience, I mean, my team was petrified for me. Like, yeah, I, I know. I'm explaining it, you know, in as in the, in the most nutshell way I can on this conversation, but it was truly one of the most like horrifying times of my life and my mm-hmm. my everyone around me was like petrified. Like it I'm was sure, my god. Yeah, it's it was so scary it was, to watch someone you love like struggle like Yeah. That. And and especially not to mention someone that was generally a very happy, optimistic, like person. And it, mm-hmm. It's like it, everything got stripped for me. So like to see, like, even like, you know, my mom seeing me like on the phone, like crying to her and like all this stuff, like she was like, what is happening? You know? But mm-hmm. my point is, is like the whole touring schedule is different now. Well, I'll never put myself in that position again. I'll never put myself in the position to do uh, like, you know, 18, 18 tour stop date in a, in a, in a short span of time. Like I will never do it again. And like now, um, ever since then, my st- my schedule has been a lot more chill. I'm doing only festivals here and there. Like, for example, I got like Lollapalooza coming up in like two weeks. I'm genuinely so excited for that. Like mm-hmm. I played I, and like, I just did EDC a little bit ago. You've got the it balance happened. going. Yeah. The balance is going and, and the balance is going to be a thing for the rest of my career now. Like I will, Good. I will never push myself like that again. Like that's the thing. It's like, I, that's, that's the way I'm going to move forward with this information and this experience is that I will, I know my limits and I know Mm -hmm. that I'm not going to put myself in that position. You know what I'm saying? Because it was the, what, what I, I believe put me in that position in the first place was like, me being unable to say no to all the opportunities right. that, that I was getting all the time. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like, how can I say no to this amount of money? How can I say no to this, this, this? Now, I do not give a single shit about any of that. Because I'm just like, I see now the importance of like, how important it is that I am well, like that I'm yeah. mentally, physically well. And and um, I, I definitely pushed myself for a really long time before I like fully realized that, which I saw Skrillex post this one thing once and I don't remember the exact quote that he said, but it was something along the lines of like, something along the lines of like, life will speak to you in whispers, but if you don't listen, it'll like fucking like smash you like a wave yeah. or something like that. Like, I, I don't remember the exact thing that he said, but he said something like that. And, so true. And it's so true. And I think for a long time, life was whispering at me that I need to like slow down, slow that down. I need to like balance and focus on like you know other things that are important to me because there's so many things that are important to me not just Mm -hmm. like my career you know what I mean and so now by the way I'm very fortunate because not everyone gets the luxury of even choosing their schedule or choosing the amount of time they have up I'm very aware I'm extremely lucky that now I have the option to really slow down and like the rest of my year is like really chill um and 2023, I just had a call about it with my team yesterday. Um, and it was all of just once again, we're, we're going to be doing one off festivals, we're going to be throwing like occasional, like big kind of curated events of my own. And that's going to be it. it's going to be maybe 30 shows tops a year, as opposed to like, you know, 70, million, yeah. 80, like, yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean? It, it's I mean, just all going to be condensed. There's like, there's this one, um, this one podcast and like self helpy whatever thing that I listen to. And one of the things I was actually listening to it earlier today, just when I was getting ready, I had it on <clears throat> and it was about, um, it was all about like manifesting, but more like neuroplasticity and like psychology stuff. But one of them was about the power of saying no and how that helps you with like happiness and abundance in life. And when you're in operating that place of like, I have to say yes to everything because like, you know, I, it's, it's kind of a, like, I may not get this again, or I have to take yeah. advantage of this now, because if I don't take advantage of it now, it w- maybe it won't come later. Yeah. And the whole thing about it is saying no is kind of showing yourself and you know the universe or whatever you want to like, look at the world, like whatever life belief systems you have, but it's basically saying like, you know what, this is too much. And I know, I know that will come in another way. So I'm going to say no now because that's what I need now, but I know it'll come back another way. So I'm not tripping. It's fine. And I've totally experienced that when I'm like, I was supposed to do, I was supposed to do a tour um, earlier this year. And I have like my, you know, whatever personal shit, my, my grandmother is like not well and she's been not well for a long time. And I just like knew I'm like, it's, 
that the time is coming and there's like way too much shit going on. COVID was like super bad. And I think this was the beginning of the year. And I was like, this is not the right time for me to be gone for a month straight. It was like 21 Mm -hmm. shows in a month. And I was like, this is, this is not a smart time for me to be out. And I felt so guilty because normally it was like, how could I say no? How can I say no to the money, to the opportunity, to the exposure, to this, to that. And I like, I have so much trouble saying no, but I was like, I know this is the right thing to do. So I have to say no. And I know I'll be taken care of in another way. And then literally the next day after I, I, you know, pulled off so many incredible work opportunities came in that was making double the amount of money of the whole tour for one day of work, like fucking all these beautiful experiences that I had never had before. Like, you know, fly me to Paris, fly all these amazing things. And I'm like, fuck that was the loudest sign from the universe that like yeah. good here's your reward for saying no here's your reward yeah. for, for doing what is right for you for your life for your health for your family for whatever you know you need to do and I think that's that's such an important lesson that a lot of people don't get a chance to learn because they they have to say yes most of the time and it's so scary to say no and there's so much more at risk to say no but I think it's just such an important lesson about boundaries that we have for ourselves, expectations we have for ourselves, for our health, for yeah. our wellness, all that shit. It's just so, so important. Yeah, definitely no doubt about it. Um, yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more. I, I do think that saying no is like extremely, extremely, extremely important. Um, I just think during the time that my tour was happening, it was almost like, my uh my value like the other values I had like such as like pushing through and like like kind of uh going through with my commitments it was like louder at the time and now I see like I'm like yeah but now I see it's like very important like clearly that has to do with having really high standards for myself which I'm like all right calm the fuck like calm the fuck down like you know what I mean now I'm just like it's okay to like say no to shit in the future and like I've already said no to so much shit for like or just find the balance it it doesn't need to be no straight up I'm not doing the thing it's like maybe yeah no I'm not doing the thing that way maybe yeah exactly exactly yeah no doubt about that um yeah exactly and also I uh about the your grandma thing same I actually forgot to mention that during that tour as well uh, on top of the, you know, mental chaos that I was dealing with, my grandma, who is from Ukraine, had to, um, like, my grandma and all my family in Ukraine had to evacuate from their homes I and, like, flee. family over there. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. And my grandma has um, uh, Alzheimer's. And Mental's so dementia. she, it's, yeah, yeah. So she, yes, yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Dementia. Yeah. So she, um, yeah, she has dementia. Sorry. I don't know if that's, is that the same thing? It's same, dementia. It, they're different diseases, yeah. but it's like the same like symptoms. Yeah. So same so. with my grandma. She, she also, uh, unfortunately is experiencing that as well. And it got a highly more triggered after the, um, you know, the evacuation of Ukraine. Yeah. So the change, was, yeah. Like the change of environment is like really not good. For yeah. It was kind of mental state. Yeah, it was, it was, it was just like, sorry. absolute chaos. Yeah, I'm sorry as well. Definitely. De- life is crazy. You know, like life, is, life will, life will throw random, random shit at everyone's in everyone's direction. Like, that's super the other unpredictable. Thing that, that's such a trip to me. Because like, I mean, we the world has always had shit going on, right? There's always been curveballs. There's always been like, fucked up stuff happening and wars and you know, terrible things. But I feel like the last few years has been a, a very odd level of shit happening that is like not normal. And then yeah. we're all, we all have a front row seat because we're all on social media observing this constantly consuming it. And it's yeah. so wild that we're expected to kind of like witness this and then yeah. go about life. Like nothing's fucking wrong. It's like, yeah. How do we find the balance there? How do you find the balance and having a hard time processing what's happening and still be like productive and still nurture your relationships and still take care of your mental health it's like how do you I don't know how do you balance I'm I'm still trying to figure it out (laughs) yeah I mean I think without question like with all the stuff that's constantly happening in the world that we're like seeing on the internet and everything so easily it's I think without question it's affecting like the energy in the in the world whether you want to like 
you know, notice, like be super aware of it or not. Like, I think like everyone's definitely been affected by it and like in their own way. And I mean, I don't know, I, I guess how you, you asked how I like, how I go about that or what's, what's the yeah, main like, question? How do you, I guess, how do you, how do you juggle and find balance with dealing with, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy realities, mental health yeah. struggles, being productive, all the other things that come in life, like the good, the bad, the responsibilities, like, do you, are you a kind of, I'm going to focus on this and put my all into this right now. And then once that's handled, I'm going to move this way. Or do you just give little bits everywhere? I just, I definitely like to, I, I definitely like to try and take things like just simply one day at a time and like one moment at a time. And, um, and also just like do little things every day that like bring joy to you and, and, also, um, for example, like I have two Red Rock shows coming up in October and like mm-hmm. the, the, I have to like make like two completely unique sets. And like one of the sets is going to be this like nightmare on Red Street. It's like this like kind of Halloween mix thing that I do it's, and it's going to be themed in that way. And so uh, that's, see, it's, see, it's been like kind of like a lot of work and I, and uh, for a bit, I was like procrastinating it, but then I was like, no, like I need to like start putting in like little bits of work every day on this because if I don't, then like the stress is just going to keep building. So yeah. it's kind of just like making making decisions that will benefit you tomorrow and be- benefit you yeah. the next day. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's just taking things like one step at a time and like not being too hard on yourself along the way. So mm-hmm. I, so now I'm like finished that one set because I was like working. That's great. I was working. Yeah, because I was like working at it for like the past like few weeks, like once, like even just like an hour a day, like, you know what I mean? Like working on something or like, it's just, it's, it really is just like the little things. Like I think um, in order to like, I think in order to like build happiness or build success or like build any sort of like fortune in any capacity, it's just like taking those little steps like every day or as many days as you can. Sometimes you will not want to do shit (laughs) like some days like some and that's okay too that's the other thing too is like knowing that like it like the day that the day that you don't want to do shit and you just sit on your ass that's fine too like you know what I mean like that's productive in a way because recovery is productive rest hugely yeah it's it's just it's just knowing kind of like just when to do things and when like what to like work like in a smart way I guess and Mm -hmm. like and and know when to like not and and all that stuff do you deal with any like insecurities and self-doubt stuff and if so if you're one of the magical people in the world that doesn't then we could skip it but if so how do you deal I really really try not to speak negatively about myself I actually have become if anything a lot more um comfortable and confident in myself uh in a lot of ways than never before for example I wear my hair naturally now that's like I know I really love it it's it's thank you it's a really like massive change for me I used to literally straighten my hair every single day for like 15 years do you know what I'm saying like it's like I obviously wasn't happy with what my what I naturally had going on and like Mm -hmm. that's fine like I think like I don't wear makeup but I think it's great when people wear I I love like makeup I love like when people do cool shit with their hair and like style their hair all that's amazing but the thing was was like I literally would avoid like living my life because my hair might get curly like literally it was like oh it's it's like I don't want to go swimming because if I go swimming my hair is going to be curly I'm gonna have to restrain my hair like you know what I mean but then I started randomly wearing my hair naturally in like 2021 and like it's changed my fucking life like literally like fully like now I don't have to do shit like I literally didn't even put shit in my hair like nothing it's It's just like healthy now my god thank you yeah thank you I just like randomly I just tried something new and I was like, oh, this actually feels like very pleasant. And I think, mm-hmm. I think definitely um, I've been fortunate to say that I don't think I struggle too much with like insecurity stuff fully. I think, I think now more than ever, I'm kind of just like pretty content. Like even um, I'm, I'm the way to, to even say that too is like, I'm starting a label, right? And in this label, I'm going right. to be having a bunch of music on it that's like, mid-tempo style like a lot of stuff that sounds like a lot of the stuff that I make if you were to ask me to do that when I was 22 I'd be like hell no because I was too like if anything I was insecure then because I was like I don't want everyone to like make stuff like stuff that sounds like me and like all this stuff like you know what I mean now I'm just like please like make everything like, I'm gonna I'll put it I'm gonna play it like I, you know what I mean like uh, I'm just yeah. in a place now where it's I don't settled. really care yeah I, I feel like definitely pretty like fulfilled um I I definitely feel pretty fulfilled and like I 
I think um, for the most part, I just really, I, I really like avoid negative like self talk. Like mm-hmm. it, it's like you see it happen all the time. Like people are constantly talking badly about themselves. Like oh, like I look stupid, or like oh, like my hair looks stupid, or like I shit, look yeah. yeah, like I look fat, or like I look skinny, or like I look whatever, and like all this stuff. Like I try to just like not really yeah. speak like that. You know what I mean? Like I just I, I really just try my best to not do that. Okay, this is always my favorite question for everybody. Um, what's your dream creation zone? So you can basically, there's no limitations. It could be like underwater on the moon. There could be walls made of candy. There could be fucking puppy dogs running everywhere. And like, I don't know, like what would be the most inspiring place for you to be to create? Oh, wow. This is such an interesting question. And it's so funny because my answer my answer, the first thing that comes to my mind is the most boring, anticlimactic answer you'll ever hear in your entire fucking interview, like what with is it, anyone. Your house? <laughs> it is, it is, right <laughs> <laughs> it's it is literally, it's literally just me sitting on the couch with my headphones on, with my laptop on my lap. That's it. That's literally, that's, really? like, I know it's the most boring ass. Yes, I know it's the most boring ass answer, right. but like that's it's just what feels and has what of what has always felt most comfortable. Like I've been put in like studios, like for example, when I collaborated with like Dead Mouse, like was in his studio and like so fucking insane and crazy. I did not like to be in there. Like it was mm-hmm. not like something that like you know. I mean, you asked the question, so like aside from like the that very basic boring ass answer, I think like my only other thing would be like. Yeah, see, I don't even know. It's like that doesn't even come into my mind because like the, all I'm thinking is like what's most. All I'm thinking is what's like most comfortable for me to be like. Yeah, if that's to, most to work. Yeah, that's, that's literally is. That's yeah, great. yeah. I mean, I mean, would I want to go to the moon? Yes, I actually. You know, it's actually funny. You know, you know, Grimes. One time, I so I asked her. I randomly texted her a question, being like, "How far? How long would it take me to get to the moon if I wanted to get there?" And and she said something like. I forget what she said. She's like, literally or figuratively. And she's like, I think it could take about like eight days to get there. And then she's like, if you want, I can like, she like literally like tried, she like, <laughs> tried to basically get like, answer. yeah, no, like she tried, she was like, I can, I can probably get you there. Like she literally said that she could probably oh help God. me get to the moon. Yeah. Like, and it was like, and I was like, wow. So yeah, of course being on the moon sounds like pretty epic, but like, you can have your couch on the moon. That's an option. Yeah. Maybe like chilling on the moon. Okay, chilling on the moon with my couch, with my laptop on my lap, and my girlfriend drawing on her iPad <laughs> next to me. That would be the most ideal situation because it's like it brings me peace for some reason when she's drawing. So when she's drawing, I would be at peace, even though I'm on the moon. That's what I would want. Yeah. That's nice. A nice couch and just chilling, and that would be it. Just yeah. a casual couch on the moon. That's chill. I'm into that. I'm into that. So you have a label that you're starting or have started. It's yeah, like starting. Yeah, label coming up. You've got your Red Rocks show. Are you work? Are you working on a new project right now, or are you just kind of like music wise? Or are you just kind of like going with the flow? Uh, I'm working on like I just finished a song with Alice Glass, and I'm going mm-hmm. to definitely put that out in a few months. Probably put out like a random like single of mine that's just like an instrumental thing but um yeah a lot of the work right now is definitely going through uh figuring out like the branding for the label artists that I would want on the label me- kind of music I'd want to release on it there's not like any like particular like project album or EP that I'm like working towards but that's that's when I'm working on an album in general I'm never really working with the intention of making an album what I end up doing is just making a bunch of songs and I'm like oh this is an album now like you know right, what I mean right, right, right. so maybe technically I could be working on an album right now <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna I don't know what it's gonna end up being it might end up yeah. being random singles that I put out it might end up being an EP I put out I don't know but um basically I'm just doing that work wise and just also I mean, just lot, really so. yeah and also just trying to like chill and that like live a balanced life you too you know what I mean so that's basically a lot of what I'm doing that's great any um a bunch of people ask this do you have any advice for people who want to get into producing music um yeah I mean I 
there was there was like a couple things that I did. It was like a lot of trial and error with like messing around with like Ableton or like whatever software you have. But aside from that, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I mean, honestly, YouTube has been like such a like such an informative thing for me on so many different like spectrums of life, whether it be like production, whether it be um like life stuff, whatever. So I would definitely just suggest to people to get get a uh some kind of software whether it be Ableton whatever you want to use does not matter what you use because they all do the same shit whatever but um I love Ableton that's just like my favorite but um get something like that mess around just literally trial and error mess around watch some videos also listen to a bunch of music that you love to understand and dissect what you love about those songs and like what you love about it whether it be like you love the pace of the music or you love the drums you love the vocals you love the melodies and how they make you feel and all this stuff and then like just kind of like being observant of all that stuff and then uh, making hopefully your own favorite music you've ever heard basically by doing that and definitely staying consistent. Huge, huge is staying consistent. It's not something, it's just like working out. It's like, what's the point of working out for like one week, you know, like, yeah. and then stopping, like if you got to be consistent and like try and uh, commit to at least a certain amount of time per day, even if it's like a small amount of time, um, just working on it every day. That's what I did. I worked, I, when I first started making music, I was working on music 10 hours a day for like two oh, wow. years. Like, yeah, 10 hours a day. All I did, that's literally it. I barely was doing anything else. But um, yeah, persist, like consistency with it. And, and just kind of like messing around. And uh, a lot of happy accidents happen. And to be aware of that, like not everything is intentional. Like you can't, I think that's, that's the thing that I would say too, is like, a lot of shit that I make sometimes just like a happy accident. I'm like, oh, that that accidentally sounds cool. I'm going to use that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> that's all very fucking helpful shit. So <laughs> wonderful. Um, any final thoughts? Any like little tidbits of advice? I feel like this, this is all so full of like advice already, but <laughs> any last thoughts? I mean, I could literally go on for hours in regards to talking about advice, especially in like the music industry and like all of that. But um, maybe maybe more focused on like on identity and people being okay with being themselves or, you know, chasing their whatever they want to do with their lives or anything like that. My literal probably main advice, I think right now would just be like to really pay attention to the signs, like pay attention to how things make you feel um, and and try to avoid those things and try to like accumulate more with things that make you feel well. And um, definitely super pointless to compare yourself to anyone because literally everyone, no matter what, even the people who you think are like at the top or like maybe have like more uh, money or more status or whatever, like they, that doesn't mean they're like fucking like having a great time in their mind. Like this, it's really pointless to like compare always. Um, And everyone has their own unique situation and their own unique problems. And it's pointless to compare and um yeah and, and try not to talk to negatively about yourself like pay attention to how you speak about yourself that'd be like one of my main things too is like what are you saying about yourself on a day-to-day basis like oh like I'm shit like I'm like like I'm like whatever or are you saying like I'm a fucking boss and like I'm yeah. gonna fucking like win at everything like what are mm-hmm. you saying you know yeah. just pay attention yeah no that's that'd so be important. it that I, that's those are fantastic little bits yeah perfect well, thank you so much this is fucking great i'm like this was really wonderful thank you for sharing all this like private shit too I'm yeah no worries i i figured i figured that I, I wanted to share it in some way but then i didn't want it to be i didn't want it to like I didn't want to do the whole like big black post with white letters like talking about like everything like for this yeah. specific like situation yeah. so i just decided like, i'm just gonna like casually speak in an interview about it and just kind of like whoever is interested will be interested and that's it (laughs) you know what I mean yeah great well thank you so much um I'm I'm psyched to see what's to come I'm psyched for the label and all the other things thank you so much this was so fun yeah well um don't hang up yep (laughs) (laughs) We're going to do a quick fake bye that I'm going to splice in there. (laughs) All right. Thanks so much. And um, I'll talk to you soon. So wait, now now do I say bye? Yes, you say bye. Oh. Just say bye. Bye. (laughs) Okay, we're just going to put that in there.